here's what we're going to do today. We're going to put this box in here. Well, what's in this box in here? And here is what's in the box. We have our Electro Co. kit minus the battery. We didn't get the display either. We've got a voltmeter for now. I have some works for the display. Oh, Don, give me some ideas. Don, if you're on any e-bike form and you see the name Don on there, that is the OG. That is the king of all this stuff. So once again, we've got the Lithium King mounts. I'll put a description, a link in the description down there so you can um, check those out. He makes some amazing stuff. He does all the work for you to make sure you get the placement and stuff right. The kits take a little bit of, you know, finagling and work, but definitely worth it. Save you so much time. And for the amount of effort he has put into those mounts and th these kits, I guess you'd call it, as far as getting the plates to get it mounted in there, totally worth the price. I believe they were like around 150 bucks paid for those. Once again, I'm paying for all this stuff. So I can give you my honest opinions. The kit right here, I mean, the wiring harness is just, a piece of beauty it really is the the little switches i love the style of these switches these this is actually aluminum you're not really going to tear that up too much you get the sprocket which will fit a full size chain and then we're going with the i think they call it the cable moto you know lever i mean we're, so we're going to put a regular throttle up there run a cable to that which will pull this so we may have to make some modifications for that but one thing you do not get, which I've never gotten with any Electro & Co. kit, is any kind of instructions. They kind of sell, and, I mean, you kind of need to know what you're doing. And um, hopefully me and other YouTubers making videos can help people learn how to wire it, what the switches do, because there's three positions for this switch. I'm expecting that to be the, the modes, and then this would be on and off, but we'll find out together so um let's get this seat pulled off let's look and see if we're going to be able to have room under the seat in the air box to mount this or if there's any modifications for that and yeah we're gonna get this motor mounted in those lithium king uh, motor plates get all of our spacing set up make some bushings and um, go from there all right using the mounts we've got a couple of the bolts holding them in there i've got one more bolt here it's going to be a longer bolt to be able to put in there Put the chain guide in where it goes, just so I can see if it's lined up properly. We'll put the wheel on and make for sure, for sure. And then on this side, we have all the room in the world clearing this rear brake. So the mock test fit up does work. This kit has this little bracket here, hooks in, supports your weight as you're sitting on the seat. That has to clear there, which means this I had to cut the bottom of that out right there. I will take something later and seal that up and should be able to make some brackets that mount that right there because this seat the way it goes in there, it has a hook right there. And as long as it clears, which it does, looks like we have a mounting spot for our controller. And motor's gonna fit in there perfectly. That's gonna give us a lot of room for batteries here. So what I'm gonna wind up having to do, probably taking some of this stuff off so I can get in here, build these mounting brackets, but they're not gonna be that hard to build, to be honest with you up there the ones down here may be a bit of a chore i'm thinking about being able to run a bracket from one side to the other on the actual subframe itself so we can bolt something a little more rigid so that's what i'm going to do next i'm going to sit here design this out build it and then once i get it together and get it in here i'll show you what i come up with i've run the wires for this controller and as you can see, it sits down in here quite well. So up next, I need to build a bracket, figure out a way to mount this. I think I have an idea where I'll come off of this with a bracket of some sort, bolt that down there, and then we can bolt the backside to the air box. 
the wires i did hook them up right now just so i have a adjust to where they're going to go i've clearanced the bottom of the air box so let's get this bracket for, for putting this together put together I had an interesting conversation with somebody in the comments talking about building these things and when you're building stuff, having the tools, I, I understand that. I mean, I do have access to a full shop, to a lot of these tools. I do my absolute best to build the stuff as if I didn't have some of these things on, on some of my budget projects. You just can't get away from having certain products. Now, I have a pretty decent snap-on welder that works pretty good. I've got a couple tools along those lines. You wouldn't need this. You could build this bracket I'm building right now without welding. Um, I'm just going to be welding mine, as you can see. But they, um, the issue I have is people saying, well, you can never do that. It's not affordable. I'm, I'm going to build this bike. It's good. This project an example i'm going to build this bike it's going to be cheaper than a start varg by many a many a thousands of dollars it's going to be fun to ride it's going to be hopefully competitive in my vet classes that i race in and on top of that let's say you spent some money on buying a welder they have very good welders you could buy from harbor freight from I mean, even on amazon i've got my tig welder down here that's where it came from it's a it's a really good welder they um that are a fraction of what they used to cost especially when this one that i have here this snap-on welder i had when it was bought new so keep that in perspective maybe you spend an extra grand or five hundred dollars on some tools but from here forward you have that tool and the next project you do you'll have that tool so remember that as you see me using a welder i built this welding table here out of a of a table saw you know th those kind of things when you see that when that some of them can be big investments but you're investing in your future and in your future pro projects that will hopefully save you some money let me show you what i've come up with what i did was took this piece of metal here. I drilled a hole in it large enough to uh, tap for M6 bolts going through there. I run the M6 bolts through. Then I, well, I mean, this is tap. They held in there. I cut them off and ended up welding the uh, tops here and ground them smooth. The reason why I did that for this design here, let me set these bolts down, is I want my motor controller to sit like this i didn't have a lot of room and wasn't able to just to drill straight through and put bolts through there and the plan will be i've got these loose here the plan will be for this to be sandwiched inside there you see i test fit it there's a piece of uh, foam right there that is going to dampen a lot of this as we put it in but it does fit these are loose That up. The motor controller lines up right there. I know y'all aren't building the exact same bike that I'm building. So this shows you that there are creative solutions to a lot of these problems. And one of those creative solutions that I've come up with is this bracket. I've got a mount down at the bottom that go through the airbox. That keeps this thing solid in here. And got our wires run. There you go. The motor is in. I didn't go through all the stuff of showing you how to do that, but I'm going to get you zoomed in here and show you the brackets and how this makes. This is, like I had said before, the Lithium King motor mount bracket. There's a lot of things that I can do in the shop. I couldn't make these, but the amount of time that you save by going through somebody who actually has done the research, these are like laser cut out. He builds them, has um, a company cut them out and then send them to you. They already bolt up to the motor. They already have the 
distance between where the swing arm pivot and this is now this generation bike they don't this is the first gen of the honda 450 it's a little bit different than the second gen which he has mounts for i took those mounts i made some tweaks to be able to make it fit in there because there was just a little bit more i mean four millimeter difference easy to make up and that's what you deal with when you're building these custom bikes when you're building this kind of stuff there's not just a full on just drop it in bolt it in and you're good to go um, those will probably come but unfortunately they're not here yet so as you can see we're looking here here's these two right here i built this spacer here and here two 10 millimeter spacers and an 80 millimeter if i believe from side to side for this little bracket here it's an aluminum sleeve he suggested me using that i may upgrade that middle sleeve as you can see it's a little thinner they are aluminum there's not uh, going to be a lot of um, force on it these brackets here are stainless steel so they're going to hold up just fine but this aluminum spacer here it's mainly just taking up the space there shouldn't be too much torsional um force on this but there, there's gonna be you know there's gonna be forces pulling everything back and pushing it so that's something i may look into this i mean it, it can't imagine it having any issues if it does i had taken some factory sized bushings here which i think if i'm not mistaken they are 20 millimeters around the the outside diameter of it is and i i turned those down to make this and you do not need a lathe to do that i've got a little tiny couple hundred dollar lathe that i bought i use that to cut them off to get exact but you could do this with a hacksaw market right cut it sand it smooth uh, that does work and i followed his instructions on how to mount this so we'll see how it holds up when we get to do our test ride video but here it is here's our motor mounted in you saw the controller how it's mounted in i have the cables run there's a lot of extra cable this may be something that i may consider shortening if i need to uh, we have all this space for activities for well for batteries so that's our next video we're going to go down to check out the battery manufacturer and yeah that's going to be the next video so make sure you stay tuned subscribe and man this thing is looking good it really is